Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 33, and I'm going to derive the Laplacian in spherical coordinates. This video comes with a health warning, because the derivation is not easy, it's not simple, it's quite tedious, and it's quite long to do. Uh, it took me approximately three hours to derive this from start to finish. The sort of person I expect to watch this video is a person who's perhaps doing an assignment, or wants to know the exact mechanics of how one derives the Laplacian and Spiegel coordinates. Because let's face it, it's used everywhere. It's used in driving the Schrodinger, or it's used in solving the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom, for example. So on the top left of your screen, I've written the Laplacian in uh, in rectangular coordinates, and I've also written directly underneath it the Laplacian in spherical coordinates. Now it can be written in one of two ways. So I've written the first way and the second way. I'm going to derive it in the second way. And if you look closely, you'll see in actual fact that the first way written more as, as operators is the exact same thing as, as the second equation. It, the second equation is just the operators having been operated. So the way I'm going to do this is I have all the equations, all the, 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 yeah, all the equations written out. So it's up to you the viewer to pause the video as you see fit and to note the actual the equations themselves. I'm certainly not going to be discussing every single term in every single equation because we're to, we'll be talking about perhaps an hour long video then. So this is very much as a reference. So let's begin. We need to begin first of all at the polar or excuse me the spherical coordinate system. So I've drawn in black our rectangular coordinates and I've also drawn in green our vector. Our vector is of length r, it has the polar angle theta and the azimuthal angle phi. And I've written the identities, uh, we'll say breaking down this particular vector into the x, y and z components. The important one to notice here is if you look at the, the top on the z, uh, well, let's say parallel to the y axis hitting the z axis, and compare it to this particular line in the xy plane, you realize that they are of the same length. And the same length is the square root of y squared plus x squared. Now, once you realize that, you can write down all the identities and all the equations that I have in the bottom left of your screen. And they're pretty straightforward. That's just Pythagoras' theorem. And also the top two on the right, excuse me, the two on the top right of your screen for cosine of phi and the sine of phi. Now, we begin to actually derive the Laplacian and spherical coordinates. First of all, let's operate the Laplacian in rectangular coordinates on an arbitrary function f. So we have, we'll say, if you want to take all the partial derivatives, we have del f del x, del f del y, and del f del z. Now, of course, x, y, and z th themselves depend on r, on theta, and on phi. So we need to use the chain rule on each one of these. So each one of these, del f del x, del f del y, and del f del z, have three terms, each of course having a, it being a product of two partial derivatives. So there's quite a lot of things here to be, these are all partial derivatives which must be calculated. And I'm going to call the three of these equations equation number one. Now let's say for example if we uh, if we look at just if we look at this particular function here, notice we have del f del r times del r del y. Now let's discuss this in a moment, the f is just a function we're using to make sure we don't make any mistakes. The actual del del r is an operator which will allow it to be operated upon and our, uh, operate on an arbitrary function. So we keep the function f to avoid mistakes and we remove f. Once we remove f, we have, we're left with an operator. So just to illustrate that, I've written the del del z operator in the exact same way as I've written del f del x and del f del y, except I've taken out the f component. So What's interesting here is, and what's very important is, we keep the operators, so what's in that case it was del f del, del del r, on the right hand side of the equation. So if you go back, you'll see one of the terms was the following. It was del f del r times del r del x. Now f is just there, just to make sure we don't make any mistakes. We take it out at the end. So for that reason, we keep that particular part of the equation on the right hand side, because that will later be operating. But the del r del x in this case, that is, that operation has been carried out. We need to take the x derivative of r. That's, that's, that's been carried out. 
and we're left with the arbitrary operator del del r. Now otherwise we could end up applying operators in error. Say for example this del r del x term, which is the same as del del x of r. Now if we aren't careful we could perhaps write del del r times del del x operating on r. And this would give us an erroneous term. So we keep the operators, the terms which perhaps would have held f on the right hand side, so that they can operate on future functions. But for now on, I'm not going to have the function f. I'm going to take that out and just talk about del del r or del del theta or whatever it is. So now we need to calculate all the partial derivatives. And some of them are straightforward. For example, if we do del r del x, you know, I'll let you do that yourself. The answer is there. Same with del r, uh, it, well, if given the answer there. So that's, pretty, that's a pretty straightforward one. And through symmetry arguments, you can have the same answer, then get a similar answer for del r del y and del r del z. So you'll need those from, for the partials that are, I wrote in equation number one. Now, the thing is here, we, we saw earlier on that the cosine th of theta was z over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now this is something we need to differentiate. Um, I personally use Wolf, the Wolfram differentiator. Um, you can use your smarts if you like, but I find I find di di differentiating a function like that to be quite tedious. So anyway, the answer is written there, so del theta del x is written in front of you, and we get the answer 1 over r cos phi cos theta. So we need to use sim similar, or there are similar uh, derivatives in del theta del y and del theta del z, which you can look up yourself. And the last, I suppose, derivatives which we need are del phi del x, and which is written there, and del phi del y. Now, at this stage, we have calculated all of the, der the derivatives we require to be filled into equation 1 back here. But note, of course, this is only going to give us the first derivative, namely del del x, del del y, and del del z. But for the Laplacian, we need the second derivatives. So, let's go ahead and have a look at the, the first derivatives when we put them all together. So the first derivative, del del x is written here, so is del del y, so is del del z. Note of course that z is not a function of phi, so it's only a function of r and theta. So that, that is always going to be the simplest term, is the, the, z, the z component. Now like I said a moment ago, we still need to calculate the second derivatives. In order to calculate the second derivative, you operate the first derivative on itself. So it'll be del del x operating on del del x, and the same for y, and the same for z. It is not multiplication. It is not multiplication. You need to be very careful that you don't multiply and you're operating each time. So let's take, for example, the first one of these. The first one I'm going to take is the, the second order z derivative. So we've written, I've written down the first order z derivative of or del, del z here, and we need to operate it on itself again. I'm not going to go through the terms, it's quite straightforward. You need to of course realize that we have the product rule on each one of these. Okay, so it's very important to use your product rule, but it's very, it's, it's very straightforward. Now I've numbered all of these in a strange fashion, like for example I'm starting with 22 and 23. I've numbered every term that I'll be using from now on. Now the reason I've numbered them like that in this video is that's the way I've numbered them in my notes and I don't uh, basically go through the hassle of writing them down as 1, 2 and 3 and so on. But you know, I can name them anything I like really I suppose, but uh, that's, that's to explain that. So I don't have any terms less than 22 for example, which is a bit odd. So let's take, just for argument's sake, terms 23 and 24. So we get those when we operate, the, when we do the following operation. When we operate del del r on this term here, 1 over sine, 1 over r sine theta del del theta. So it is a, it is a, uh, it, it is a product rule, so we need del del r on 1 over r. Okay, so we get, uh, we have the minus 1 over r squared, but there's a minus term up here already for example. And then we're left with delta del theta, that operator here. And we get something similar then for the other one, except we're left at 1 over r there. Okay, so this is how we get the second derivative with respect to z. And it is the most simple and the most straightforward of the lot. 
The next one we need to do is take the second order x derivative. Of course, because this depends on both, on, excuse me, all of r, theta and phi, it's going to be more complicated and more involved. So on the top right of your screen, I've written that one. So we can see in the first angle brackets here, or the first, excuse me, square brackets, these aren't angle brackets, that is the, the first derivative operator. And I've written then the second derivative operator right beside it. Now, the terms in between the brackets, I didn't want to write them out again. So in order to calculate the second order x derivative, we have sine theta, excuse me, sine theta cos phi del del r operating on all the terms within the bracket. And we repeat that except with the operators 1 over r cos theta cos phi del del theta and minus 1 over r sine phi divided by sine theta del del theta. As you can imagine, this is going to be pretty big because we have product rules involved in absolutely all of these. The answer is as follows, and that's on the left-hand side of your screen. I know it looks very messy, but I don't see any other way of writing this. It's, it's not possible, really. Look at the number of terms. So, if you look closely, I suppose, you'll see that I have, I have angle brackets around each of the three sections, each of the three sets of operations that we performed. And all the answers are there. It's written in reasonably legible, legible writing, and I've, I've also numbered them. So you just need to take your time, work through the product rules, and just make sure you don't have any errors. You, of course, can check uh, your errors from my, uh, from, from my text here. Note, of course, this is awful. Like, it's not something you do for fun, but it's there nonetheless. So th taking the second derivative with respect to y is the exact same procedure. So I won't go through it, I'll just give you the answer. So the answer is here on the left-hand side of your screen. Once again, there are a terrible amount of terms. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal in many respects. So you have the second derivative with respect to y. And these terms are numbered from 29 to 45. Now the next thing we need to do is start to group the terms. So we need to put these terms together. And how we group them is we group them by their derivatives. So let's say if we look at the second order y derivative, we can see, for example, looking at the top left of your screen, we have a, a del 2 del r squared term. Now we're going to group, for example, all the del 2 del r squared terms. And, well, in fact, of course, they're only going to be, there's only going to be one for each of the sections. They're going to be one from the del 2 del y squared, one from the del 2 del x squared, and one from the del 2 del z squared. So just to go back one page and show you that, here is the del 2 del x squared, and we can see there's a del 2 del r squared term up on the top left. So what I've done is, I, because I've numbered all the terms, I've written the terms which contribute to each one of the groups. So we have the second r derivative, the first theta derivative, the second theta, the first r, and so on. Now you might wonder why I've grouped them in that way. Well, I suppose I did start grouping them because some of them sum to zero, but there's no particular order of the groupings. Now notice then, on the right-hand side of the page, I've given the answer for each of the groupings. So for example, if you grouped del 2 del r squared, you're just going to get back del 2 del r squared. And that's because all of the cosine squared and sine squared terms just start summing to 1, and you get left with, you're get you just left with a coefficient of 1. Conversely, if you look at del del phi, for example, here, that sums to 0, and so do the last three terms. They sum to 0. So we're left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 non-zero terms. And I suppose when I got to this point, I said I may as well have it as complete as I possibly can make it. So I started just showing you those results. So I picked all the ones that sum to 0, first of all. And if you look, say, on the top left of your screen, so you have del 2, del r, del theta. Notice we have a cos squared phi plus sine squared phi term. Well, that sums to 1, and you get that all over the place, basically. Lots, this happens very, very regularly. And this all sums to 0. So of those, the first non-zero term is del 2, del phi squared. And this is 1 over r squared, sine squared theta, del del phi squared. So that's on the bottom right of your screen. That's the first non-zero term. So the remaining terms 
are here right in front of you. We have the del del r term, the del 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 two del theta squared term, we have the del two del r squared term, and the del del theta term. The del del theta theta term is you know it's it's got quite a lot of terms, but if you look at it, they all cancel out. They all cancel straight out. There, it's 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 absolutely simple. I suppose the difficulty in this is just your your bookkeeping. Do you have the, the pluses and the, the minuses correct? Have you done your differentiation correct? Are you uh, transcribing from page one to page two correctly? If you can do that, this is very straightforward. The difficult part, in my opinion, was doing the product rules correctly and noting how to write down the operators. If you know the answer, it looks very simple, and it, of course it is very simple, but you could spend a bit of time thinking about applying them correctly. So finally, when we put all that together, we get what's in blue at the top left of your screen. So, <laughs> from all those terms, we must have had close to 50 terms, perhaps even more terms, and they all added to give us the following five terms. So you have one, two, three, four, yes, we had five terms. And that was that was certainly, as I've illustrated on the right, few. And I remember when I derived this myself, I certainly was thinking, <laughs> I was certainly thinking to myself, few. So we can rewrite this in its standard form, which is written on the bottom left of your screen there. So note, of course, there are operators. Um, and for example, here, this is sine theta, del del theta. That's an operator on something, OK? So you're going to get product rules left, right, and center. Uh, say, say, for example, here, this del del r term, that is an operator. So del del r and r squared is going to give you twice r. Uh, so you're going to get twice r over r squared multiplied by del del r. And that's what this term is up here. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about that. Um, perhaps you're, uh, you're one of the few to be here if you're listening to me right now. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below. Thank you.